In my last video, I showed how the demand by gamers did not explain the incredible profits by NVIDIA. And by spending hours and hours investigating, I found out that the demand is coming from casual miners. But why are the GPUs priced as high as they are? In this video, I'll show what determines the GPU street prices, why I have hope for the future. Let's get into it. Have you wondered why the prices of GPUs are set to where they are? Why does an RTX 3090 that has a $1,500 MSRP sell for $2,700 on eBay? Why does an RTX 3080 Ti go for $1,900? What is the reason for these price levels? 3dcenter.org has been tracking the price of GPUs from various retailers in Germany. Their chart shows the monthly aggregate percentage over MSRP for the latest NVIDIA RTX 3000 series and AMD's RX 6000 series of GPUs in 2021. The chart clearly shows a trend where earlier this year you saw a sharp rise in GPU prices where it peaked in May and then came sharply back down and has since leveled off. The increase in the inflation rate this year jumped from 1.4% to 5.4%, so a delta of 4%. But that 4% jump does not explain the 60% increase seen today. Do you know what else jumped up and then came sharply back down? Bitcoin. This is the chart of Bitcoin prices for the last year, and you can see the run up to May and then the sharp decline. However, GPUs don't mine Bitcoin, they predominantly mine Ethereum. If we look at the chart of Ethereum prices, it also shows a sharp rise to May and then a decline. Coincidence? Since the price of GPUs seems to correlate with the price of crypto, let's dig deeper and get inside a miner's head to what they are thinking. The GPU is really just an MPU or a mining processing unit as the rigs they build do nothing but mine and mine crypto. A miner looks at the GPU and its price and the first thing they ask themselves is, what is the payback period or the return on investment? This simply means, based on how much this GPU earns per day, how many days will it take to get my money back? That means once the GPU has paid for itself, everything it mines after that point is pure profit. Many miners in blogs, forums, chats talk about the payback periods in the six to nine month time frame. It seems like in our present environment, any GPU that can pay for itself within six months or 180 days is a green light. And if it gets closer to nine months or 270 days, then they start to think twice about it as the risk becomes too high and the fear sets in for what would happen to my investment if the crypto market crashes. So based on that general information from the mining community, let's create a chart showing the acceptable GPU price versus profits per day that GPU generates. This will demonstrate how much money a miner should pay for a GPU to get their payback within a certain period of time. And we'll do that for three different payback periods to represent the different levels of risk different GPU miners are willing to take. First, we'll start out with the six month payback period, which today is considered low risk. Calculating the line for the payback period of six months, you can see that if your GPU makes $3 per day of profits after electricity costs, then you should not spend over $540 for that GPU to pay for itself in six months. If your GPU makes $6 a day, then you should not pay over $1,100 for that GPU for it to pay for itself within six months. Finally, if your GPU makes $9 per day, and an RTX 3090 today makes over $9 a day, then you should not pay more than $1,650 to have that 3090 pay for itself within six months. Since we know people are willing to pay much more for the RTX 3090, let's consider a longer payback period or ROI of 240 days or eight months. I'll plot that line in yellow since that longer time period represents a higher level of risk and many miners will slow down their purchases if over that line. For an eight month payback period, you can see that at $9 per day, you should not spend more than $2,160 to have that 3090 pay for itself within eight months. Again, we know that miners are paying more than that, so let's consider a 10 month payback period. I'll plot that line in red since it is a hard stop for most miners. They will not buy if the ROI goes past 300 days. Plotting that 10 month ROI line and at $9 per day, you can see that you should not pay more than $2,700 for a GPU. If you look at the recently sold listings on eBay for buy it now prices, you see many selling in the range of $26 to $2,700.
going through the buy it now prices on eBay for all of the NVIDIA 3000 light hash rate GPUs. Since every GPU other than the Founders Edition cards going forward will be LHR GPUs. Then looking up the hash rates that have already been partially unlocked, you can plot the buy it now eBay price versus that GPU's profit per day. So on this chart, we have the RTX 3060, 3060 Ti, 3070, 3070 Ti, 3080, 3080 Ti, and these are all the LHR versions with the 70% unlock. Then the RTX 3090, which are currently all non-LHR versions. Based on the profitability per day, you can see that the 3060 and 3060 Ti have the shortest payback periods. The 3070, 3070 Ti and 3080 represent a higher risk at those prices. And finally, the 3080 Ti and 3090 representing the highest risk. This explains why the 3060 cards are snapped up quickly and the highest end cards are more available in places like the Newegg Shuffle. Even though NVIDIA implemented LHR cards, the miners are very motivated and have partially cracked the system to get 70% of the performance. And even at 70%, the Ampere architecture is just so good computationally that they are still very profitable and can have an ROI in the 180 to 240 day range, which makes them very desirable amongst miners. This really demonstrates that the street prices of GPUs are driven by miners, not gamers. Gamers, unfortunately, are just caught up in this mess. If the profitability increased, then GPU miners would be willing to pay even more, like earlier this year. If the profitability goes down, then the GPU miners start to dial down the prices they are willing to pay, and cards start to sit on the shelves at the high prices. By the way, if you like videos like this, hit that like button and consider subscribing for more, and let me know in the comments below your thoughts on if Nvidia did enough with the LHR cards, or if it was more of a PR move to look like the good guy for gamers. And speaking of sitting on shelves, since I did my first video on the RX 6600 XT that started this series, I now see that the stock of Radeon 6000 GPUs are readily available from Newegg. That's right, you can just go to Newegg, add to cart, and purchase the card. No queue to enter or shuffle to win, you can just purchase the cards in stock. Why are miners not buying these up? Let's take the chart from before and plot the AMD 6000 series to see how they compare in terms of payback periods. So we have the RX 6600 XT, the 6700 XT, the 6800 XT, and finally the 6900 XT. The newly released 6600 XT has a payback period of 282 days or almost nine and a half months. The 6700 XT at $900 has a payback period of about 8 months. The 6800 XT is over 9 months, and the super high price of the 6900 XT, which does not mine any better than a 6800 XT, leads to an ROI of more than a year. All of the GPUs in AMD 6000 series have high prices, and that, along with their lower profitability compared to Ampere, as miners passing on all of these cars and thus they are now sitting on shelves available to purchase. That is not true of Nvidia's Ampere based 3000 cards. The mining community prefers Nvidia GPUs and they are more optimistic that the profitability will increase as more hacks are done to further unlock these LHR cards. For miners to buy AMD cards you would have to see the cards not only dip below the yellow line but get closer to the green line. At today's profitability that would mean the RX 6600 XT would need to be closer to $450, the 6700 XT would need to be closer to $700, and the 6800 XT be closer to $900. Is there any hope? If you need a GPU and have the money for the high retail prices of, a, of an AMD card, then it looks like they will be available. Unfortunately for the balance of this year, it appears the profitability will remain the same or could go higher if further hacks are done on LHR cards, leading to a continued out-of-stock listings for NVIDIA cards. However, for 2022, we could see a dramatic change to the landscape and it could be the perfect storm that could bring new GPU prices back to MSRP and have used GPUs available for well under MSRP. What are those changes and when will they happen? We'll cover that next time. If you haven't seen my previous videos in this series, click on one of these. Thank you all so very much for watching. Stay safe.
and I will see you in the next one.